What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm here with Gersh Wan, and we're back at it to answer more of your questions in another episode of For the Greater. Yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, simply comment down below. Put question in front of your question, because we get to those questions first. That is what Sawed Off Clown did. He asks, does the Imperium still colonize new planets? Yes, constantly. <laughs> Uh, if there is a planet that has some type of resource that the Imperium can use for the massive uh, war going on uh, everywhere, uh, then yes, of course, they're going to colonize that planet and they're going to try to, uh, uh, just, you know, you make it their own. Right. Uh, we've seen so many instances of, like, genocide, because, like, you know, xenophobia is a thing in the Imperium. Mm -hmm. So they're going to obviously, if it's a Xenos-controlled world, they're going to take it by force. Obviously, if humanity's in there, if they're being enslaved or if they're just working apart from the Imperium, they're going to try to include them. But chances are they're probably just going to use force to take it over. Yep. Uh, there's been many instances of this, more so during the Great Crusade. But, I mean, it still happens, you know, here and there in the 41st millennia. Yeah, and then you always have um, planets that actually go against the Imperium, so they have to re... or what's it called? pacify yeah. them i guess you could mm -hmm. say um so yeah that's going on right now right and just because they have control of planets doesn't mean they'll lose control like for example tyranids can you know eat a whole planet up and then it's like well you can't do anything about that yep but like say dark eldar invasions happens and now they have control of the planet then they got to reconquer that planet you know Right now in Ultramar, after Gilliman destroyed Mortarion, um, they're trying to rebuild Ultramar to make it as, as amazing as the, um, the Soul Sector, I think it's called. But well, basically our solar system. Right. Which yeah. basically it's like a mini Imperium in itself. Yeah. But yeah, they're still, they're still taking planets. Good question though. Next one. This one's by Pineapple. What do you guys think of the Primaris Woven? Do you think possible, uh, do you think that this is a possible cause? for the Curse of the wolf, Wolfen being in the DNA, and since there's new Primaris Space Wolves, maybe they also can fall for it. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, what I thought is that Primaris Gene Seed was supposed to be unblemishable. Like, it was supposed to be like perfected by Belisarius Call and all that, so that there shouldn't be any mutations, but I feel like Wolfen is already a mutation, so like, yeah. that shouldn't be possible. What, no, what I think it was is that the gene seed was perfected in the sense that, like, they, they got three those three extra gene seed organs um, from the whole new Primaris. But when the Primaris gene seed was created or when it was perfected, the whole idea of there being flaws in the gene seed was still kind of like, because it was 10,000 years ago, so right. it's kind of like, well, we don't really talk about that, and, and I don't think Belisarius Call really knew. So then when it came out, like, you're working with something that was already uh, bad to begin with. Um, so they worked by, on improving what was already bad. So that extra bad stuff, so the wolf and curse, the, the blood thirst, all that kind of stuff still carries over. Um, because that wasn't um, addressed in the beginning, I guess. Right. And another thing, too, is you got to think that Gene Seed isn't just Space Marine. Like, it's not generic Space Marine. Like... Each gene seed is specifically, like, has their own, like, DNA, like, patterns or whatever based on their chapter, based on the Primarch. So, obviously, you'd have to tamper with, like, every specific legion, or, I guess, yeah, legion back in the day, to go through each mutation, each flaw in each, uh, in each chapter's gene seed. Yep. Which is a pretty, pretty daunting task. Because mm -hmm. just because you can, let's say you can cure the Black Rage, doesn't necessarily mean you can cure, you know, the wolf. So. Yeah, that's true. And then also, like, right after the Horus Heresy, I think the fact that the traitor legions were really the big scare. So, like, the traitor legions were the ones that their gene seed was seen as flawed. Right. Uh, not, so, it kind of, like, like, there could be two bad things, but, like, one is relatively um, badder than the other. So, of course, they're going right. to focus on that one. Anyways, next question comes from Tau Ethereal. Why are orcs so bad at shooting? Because they shoot like gangsters. <laughs> they uh, tilt their pistols sideways. Uh, but yeah, why is it though? Because it's just because of their their uh, 
with the physiology like they can the depth perception or no based based on like the quirks or whatever i think it's just like they're built to be aggressive and like being patient and like sitting there and shooting is not in there right because i've never heard of any well no they are orc snipers right yeah there's like commandos and stuff well that you can't play a sniper for the orc like there isn't for in the army there's no snipers but like you do have like rocket guys or um what are they called um rocket boys rocket boys no those are boom boys tank busters tank busters there. there you go um but yeah interesting the next question this one is by um what's this luan luan x what smells worse, an orc or a follower of Nurgle? And, well, it depends, because the follower of Nurgle might just have, like, your typical Nurgle's rot. So it smells like dying. Dying, decomposing flesh. Yeah. Um, but an orc smells like feces. So <laughs> what's worse to you? Right. Decomposing, decomposing flesh or feces? So it's really up to you. What's your taste? <laughs> what's your preference of disgusting smells? Comment down below. Uh, next question comes from Inquisitive81. What is your guys' opinion on alternative miniatures for Warhammer 40k? They are awesome. Not some of them. There are some that look a little goofy and weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's got to fit with the aesthetic, I guess. Because, um, like, we've had people <coughs> that play with pieces of paper. Well, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I'm bringing space wolves and these are 12 wolves. It's like, no, they're just pieces of paper. Yeah. But, like... You could bring in, like, for I, like for bringing in wolves, I could see that as using, like, third-party miniatures and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and there's some other companies that actually, like, make, like, guns and torsos and stuff that fit 40K miniatures and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. But I think, overall, the aesthetic has to fit in order for it to be nice. What's that one that you um, got your demons from? Creature or something? Cre creature caster. Yeah, that, that party... Third party is like really awesome. Yeah. That company is really awesome. They make really good products. They're freaking huge and they're like highly detailed. And the mm -hmm. thing that I like about it is that it's not really like intricate. Like maybe it's four pieces that you got to glue together. Yeah. As opposed to like a demon prince, which has like, you know, sprues and whatnot. So, but yeah, I mean, check out these companies. They're, they're really innovative and they got like some awesome designs and whatnot. Yeah. Next question comes from David Kutz. Do or how do Nids name characters return after the digestive pits and the hive strips a planet? Right, so like when a hive fleet arrives at a planet, destroys it, they might send the old one eye down there. Um, but then afterwards, what's supposed to happen is that everything that was on the planet jumps into those giant vats and it putrefies and it goes, it sucks back up in those giant straw thingies. <laughs> what are they called? Capillary towers? Yeah. Um, and then they move on, but when they move on, old one eye appears again with only one eye. So, uh, I think the thing is that it's a, like his, his, uh, essence, no, his, is it his DNA? I don't know if Tyrants yeah, have DNA. Th they do. Well, it's the DNA that stays there. Yeah. It floats around. And then when the hive mind thinks that it's necessary to throw him back out there, they throw him back out there. Right. Kind of like with each swarm lord gaining experience from each battle. It's not just a new swarm lord every time. Yeah, it's like the Terminator. There you go. Yeah. Exactly like the Terminator. Mm -hmm. Like we're seeing different Versions. Arnolds. Yeah. yeah, but it's really in the same way. It's the same guy, kind of. I don't know, it's weird. Next one. This one's by Deagle Rance. This is kind of long, but here goes. Are the Chaos Gods and the God Emperor omnipotent or nigh omnipotent or neither? Uh, he's got more questions, but that's the first. Um, so, basically you're saying if he's like all-seeing, all-knowing. Yeah, and the answer is no to, to both the Chaos and the Emperor. Yeah. Because um, like, I don't know, I feel like the, even though they were supposed to be there from like, because like gods are supposed to always be around, right? Like, but then like Slanesh was born, you know, and it's like, I don't know. It's, it's well, the fact that they're struggling and that there's chaos right. shows you that they're not all powerful because there's always a struggle. Right. Um, and then the the emperor himself, like the fact that he's a god, is even a big question. Mark. Right. Because I mean, legends say he's just a man. 
But again, like, there's he's he's doing like extraordinary things that like humankind could it can't really, like I don't see them really being able to do this. Yeah. So it's. I think they're just being. I think they're just using the word God to showcase their power more so. Like uh, Catan gods, like you're gonna know that they're really strong. Chaos gods, obviously they're like really powerful, but I don't. I feel like they're not like godly in the term that you're like thinking of, like omnipotent and stuff yeah. like that. The second question is, um, are there other living saints besides Saint Celestine that exist currently? Currently, I don't think so. Yeah, she's like one of the main ones right now. If you think the, um, what are those guys that come out of the wharf called? The Space Marines? Oh, the, uh, they used to be the Firehawks. The Legion yeah. of the Dam. Le yeah, if you think the Legion of the Dam, they're kind of like, um, living saints. Because yeah. they come back from wherever they are. Warp. <laughs> the warp. But yeah, Saint Celestine, obviously, she's the main one. She's the poster girl for saints. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's been other saints. Like, they, they name them in, like, the Sisters of uh, Battle. Um, you can just look up like named characters and stuff like that, but yeah, Celestine is pretty much the number one. Yeah. Next question comes from Hive Mind. What is your favorite warlord? My favorite warlord has to be Wazdeka, because um, he had his giant bike, uh, the bike of the apocalypse, and he rammed it into the head of a warlord titan, and the titan exploded. He was also on fire. <laughs> Wazdeka. Wazdeka was yeah. Uh, he's a pretty badass character. I don't think this new model is Wazdaka, right? I doubt. I think it's just like a generic one, just replacing the old. Yeah, which is a shame, because it would have been badass to get Wazdaka as a model. Did Wazdaka ever have a model? No, he didn't. He never had a, a model. Um, the Forge World war boss on a bike, though, that guy looks badass. Yeah. He's like scooping up. He has like a chain... No, he has some um, saws, I think, for fists. Yeah. How do you drive a bike with saws? You don't. That's why he's like leaning over. He's just perpetually going to the left. That's, that's or right. Story. Yeah. <laughs> Either or. Next question or last question. What you got? Joseph Huggins. If all the sleeper planets of the Necrons woke up at once and combined their strength, could anybody stop them? I mean, wouldn't they just be able to carve a path straight to Terra if they wanted to? I honestly think that the Tyranids are a biological weapon made to destroy the Necrons. I made a 40 Facts video on it, uh, so check that out. Um, it's, it's titled, Where Are the Old Ones Now? I think it is. Yeah. Uh, so the Old Ones created the Tyranids, so if all Necrons were to all of a sudden wake up, they the biggest threat was not would not be humanity would not be chaos it would be the massive high fleets that would enter the solar system or the milky way galaxy and just or try attempt to wipe out the necrons interesting interesting i go more in depth about it in the video because at first you think like oh no like tyranids and necrons are completely opposite from each other tyranids eat biomass necrons are living metal yeah but then when you actually like break it down it makes sense because the Tyranids are built not only to destroy Necrons, but to destroy Chaos and to leave a clean sleep. So that's what I think would happen. What do you think would happen if they all woke up? Well, they'd take the universe hands down. Yeah. I feel like even right now, with the divided um, sections of like, what are they called? Dynasties. Necron dynasties that they are. Mm -hmm. they, they're they whooping the Imperium. like The Imperium for sure, yeah. Yeah, like the, the Ultramarines got whooped by Necrons. Sicarius almost died to Necron. Just plot armor saved him. Um, so basically, if they all combine, it's it's done. Like there's I, there's no way I see the Necrons losing. They've got super powerful armor. They've got weapons that literally deatomize people. And then the cherry on top, they got Pokemon known as Catan. Pokemon. So. Hands down, <laughs> Necrons would take the universe if they all came together. If the Silent King came back and united them, it's done. It's their universe now. Comment down below, let us know what you think. Yeah. And those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Don't forget we have a Patreon with a simple dollar a month. You guys can help us create more videos for you. If you can't, don't worry. Simply by liking, commenting, and sharing, it helps out the channel. Give us, give us suggestions as to what you want. That's right. Uh, but yeah. Yep. And uh, that's all we got. As always, I'm the Sound Alchemist. Gersh One. We are out of here. <laughs>
Keep it with my feet.